Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about correcting a decision. So let's get into it. So the question in question today was a bit of a story. It went, hi Frederick, how do I correct this decision? I have taken a wrong decision of joining two big companies and after about six years my paycheck is a lot less and my knowledge is very limited in comparison to my friends. Now I want to switch jobs but I get rejected because now my knowledge doesn't match my paycheck anymore. So I understand that I need to increase my skill level moving forward uh, but I want to know how to correct this for a guy with over 10 years of IT experience and the short answer is holy shit this is gonna be bad but you can save the situation by learn understanding how what your weaknesses are that's probably where you need to start let me explain so this is the nightmare scenario for uh, a senior developer, I would say. This is, as, I'm not saying it's as, as bad as it can get, but it's like really up there. And this is something that you juniors, like you, like we, like juniors, they just don't get this. Guys, this fear that you have of, oh, I don't know anything and nobody wants to hire me and I don't get any offers back, th that might be scary to you, but do you want to know what's really scary? Really scary is when you have 10 years of experience, but it's not quality experience and people think that you're incompetent. That is scary, because that means that you can practically not save the situation. Like if people are willing, at the very least, to consider a junior developer in some companies, but no company wants to hire a senior developer who codes like a junior developer. Nobody, like literally nobody's going to hire that and hire such a person. The best thing that can happen usually if you're in that situation is that you take a, if you're really lucky, you might get into a company that has a really bad, like has a, has fairly big holes in the recruitment process or something like that. There are ways to do this, but if they're going through like standard and good practices for testing their and screening their uh, candidates, you're in a bit of a pickle, a pretty big one. So, if you want to solve that, you like I didn't get any more information on this, so I can't really say so much more about what you should focus on, but you are getting rejected most likely because as you were as this person was stating like there there's a knowledge gaps that your skills aren't up to scratch and as you can imagine if you have quote unquote a senior levels uh, le levels uh, developers paycheck but you're not coding at that level anywhere apart from within your company you're kind of stuck on um, even if you're willing to go down in salary well you can I mean for that's also an option you can take you could just go back to school quote unquote or like just uh, consider going to a company where they're hiring someone who is not a senior and like take a just be very transparent about that and be humble enough to go down in salary uh, that's one option the other option is as I said you can you, you have to increase your experience level so that it, at the very least is adjacent to that of people who have 10 years of experience like if you're I mean and one thing that I suggested to this person was that you can have a look at see in your company if there's some way for you to increase your responsibility area because that's the thing that goes unsaid in a lot of um, software engineering circles and in, within our community when we're trying to coach people in their career guys there are people who will tell you that when you reach a certain age or something like that, then you're not going to be able to stay around in software development. That is absolute bullshit. The people who don't stay in software engineering very long when they get to a certain age or like they have worked for a certain amount of time are the people who don't progress their skill levels up to a point where they can take greater and greater responsibility. It is true that there is a prejudice in many companies where if you reach a certain point some companies will just feel like it's weird to hire somebody I don't know in their 50s or 40s or something like that and just have them do coding if you haven't progressed to a point where you're basically able to run the show that's gonna be weird but I can promise you one thing there ain't no company who's gonna hire a 20 something something to run the show 
that's not what they're looking for. If you're looking for someone to run the show, you're looking for somebody who is middle-aged and has quite a lot of experience. That's what you want to invest in. That's why you pay them these sorts of money. So if you've been working for 10 years, but you can't actually produce or like you can't move around or like you don't have the charisma, you don't have you don't know the lingo, you don't have the mindset. All these things factor in into your market value. So if for this specific subscriber, I highly suggest that that's what you should be focusing on. You need to start identifying where your weaknesses are. If it's just coding related, and I don't think it just is coding related, it might be. Well, then that should be your focus area. But you also have to remember that when, as the longer you stay in IT, the bigger and bigger responsibility people kind of expect you to take. There doesn't have to be this way. And there are still developers that I know, I have personal friends that are in their mid 50s now and they're still only quote unquote coding. So it's possible to stay there. But you should be aware of that most of the industry has this subjective idea of a you have the life cycle of a developer. They go from this uncertain little junior developer who knows nothing and just really like ambitious and insecure and wants to get stuff done to a stable, productive software developer and either they stay there forever or ideally like they progress and all of a sudden they can take on team leader responsibilities and they can like manage uh, projects etc etc. So that's what you should keep with you. So what I want you to take away from this is just that if you find yourself in a, this sort of situation, you should know that this is pr th this is not good. It's not good at all. Um, I wish I had I could say it in a nicer way, but it's not good. So the first thing you need to do is to basically bridge the perceived inexperience that you have, and best way to do that is to ask yourself the question can I expand my expand my responsibility area within my company can what are my technical limitations like is there something like is my coding weak like do I don't I know enough tools don't I know how to talk to stakeholders like what is the problem you need to figure out what the weakness is and you need to start bridging it within the company that you find yourself in you will be able to do this don't worry about it because that's uh, it's not like you're stupid it's just that some people go through a lot of experiences and they absorb everything like they just their mind picks up on all of these little things that you learn through experience and some people just kind of breeze through without thinking so much about what's going on they're just kind of happy living in their own world doing their thing just getting stuff done and when they both arrive at a certain age one of them is going to know a lot of stuff because they were looking around and paying attention and one of them is just going to be where they were 10 years ago or where, wherever they started out with and if you get to that point you can always reverse that you can always there's no such thing that it's too late you can always say all right now I'm gonna start paying attention because I now know that oh there were all these things going on that I needed to look and pay attention to in order to further my career and you can do that whenever you want have a great day